drag us into a, a game four, into maybe even a game five if they keep that momentum up. Could be a fun one. Let's see if Aurora can force us at least to a fourth game. Talent again, one game away from being able to proceed through the Dream League season 24 close qualifiers for SEA Prepare as the champions. But they've got to win this game to make that happen, otherwise we do get to game four. Which is happy days for you and I, Jonathan, but not so much for Talon. I mean, this Meepo has been very scary. I mean, surely Talon, at some point throughout this grand final, would have been expecting TA2000 to pick this up, considering he did run it both times in game one and two of the lower bracket final. The thing is, with their draft, it's a matter of whether they're ready to deal with it. And personally, I don't know if they have enough. Uh, I think it's going to be hell, like it's going to be very hard to deal with if they don't get off to a very strong laning start here, Talon. We'll see. Them. We shall see. I mean, they've certainly surprised me for the first two games. You should apologize. That they have. They already get a nice advantage on Aurora. Instant D ward on the Talon ward on the Dark Side River. So that already cuts off the smoke play Talon was looking for. They are still making a long move around with Akashi, but again, there's an Obs ward here as well. Or has managed to get some coverage for any aggressive plays. Uh, Bosku will at least get the sentry block on hand, but not spot the OBS. Bounyun's about to spawn. Perhaps a bit of a fight here down at bottom lane. Not really, though. Or rather, bottom rune spot, but not really. Still going to end up being a two-for-two two trade anyway, so a nice even start between these two teams. Mid lane's probably going to be the, the boring one, you know, they've got a Dragonite on Arbed here against the, the Makoto Puck, so I, I don't really expect too much to happen as Arbed. Have fun, Just Poggy, have fun twice. Yeah, have fun has Handsome. And so Akashi says as well onto Arbed. I, oh my goodness, I, I have, who loves I, in this I, game? I, I, yeah, I, I thought that would be Abed talking to Cuckoo, but it's Akashi, apparently. I didn't know they would talk to each other. Heck, I didn't know Abed talked to anyone outside of his teams. Right? Sure, doesn't talk to us, John. I'll tell you that. I mean, I, yo, he did talk to us to tell us that the Watermelon Sinigang was not good as they get first blood somehow up top. But it was good, John. Akashi does it get was. first blood. Yeah, very... It's just I mean, as good as this first blood for Town, Right? Like, I mean, I uh, I'll bid that to his face because he might, you know, give me a bit of a... <laughs> give me the Gabby treatment as I like to call it. Anyway. Akashi is taking a fair bit of damage on this Luna, but... Okay, he does secure first blood. Going to be very happy at this top lane. I'm a bit surprised that happens up top at all. It looks like Cuckoo managed to maybe get a nice angle. Battery salt off. Uh, chase down with a Lucent Beam. And again, that extra right click damage you get with a Moonstorm is significant. Q's doing great work in zoning out and landing the Scatter Blast, though, with the reset he gets. So Akashi's not going to be the comfiest in this lane. And again, this lane for Aurora does have a lot of play. You've got Cookie, you've got Xmark, you've got the Constant Tidebringer. Luna's not a long-range hero, especially not in the laning phase, so Constant Harassment can come true here for Aurora, and that is going to make it a little bit slower for Akashi, even with that first blood lined up for himself. How's the bot lane going? I mean, you're going to have TA2000 and carry against WS and Joe Cam, and... Again, TA2000 really has not struggled at all every time we've seen this Meepo pick up. The sniper is going to be annoying, but Meepo naturally has pretty high armor. Like, 8 base armor is kind of ridiculous for a hero in laning stage, and... Uh, the, the sniper's quite literally just tickling TA2000 every time he connects with a right pick. And he is. Like, it's it's 8 armor and the fact that he has 846 HP with a rate band, triple branches. Yeah. It's a ridiculous amount of EHP. Meanwhile, you know, this Doom, WS, double constants of strength, circlet, two branches equipped, only 934 and 5 armor. And the Meepo does get a lot to ride through the rougher part of the game for himself. Again, there is some play, Infernal Blade into Shrapnel can be good if you can somehow work your way onto the Meepo. But Kauri is doing a great job of just creating a divide between WS and TA2000, providing that spacing here for the Meepo to just farm safe. Looking back at mid for a moment, Arbed obviously having a great time in terms of the, in terms of the CS, and that's to be expected when you're playing DK versus Puck. A Dragonite will just always win out the CS war here against his hero. Not too much Makoto can do about it, but secure his own farm. The Makoto is doing a good job of keeping up quite nicely, but of course Arbed is going to pull ahead. 
That's not going to be surprising whatsoever this game. Hmm. There's one thing I wanted to point out. Look at top. Look at Cuckoo's skill build, right? He goes 2 0 1. This is because yeah. he, he's up against Snapfar. I have. Uh, uh, theoretically, Clock is good against Snap in terms of playing with Hookshot into Kisses, but in lane, it makes your Cogs useless. You can machine gun when you're trying to get the Cogs kicked around. You do not win that as Clock. So I like Cuckoo's adjustment into just 2 0 1. No Cogs, no point playing around with the expanded armature. Just harass them the good old fashioned way and get, get your laning presence done that way. It's still a slower lane for Akashi, but you know what? Jabs isn't quite running away with his lane in terms of CS either, so. You're still in a happy game state for talent, at the very least in creep score up top. Kind of goes to show you how bad the other the other clockwork facet is. It's like you'd yeah. rather <laughs> the cogs facet without cogs than pick up the other one that literally does nothing unless you miss. Like how you know? <laughs> like I hit my teammates, so I get a you know. It's just so stupid. Anyway, Q trying to get aggressive. Cuckoo's gonna be okay. Akashi will be okay to retreat to boot. Stop it. What can you do? Uh, I mean, at least they gave us one good again. facet, you know? Clockwork could be like Earth Spirit, where he has no good facets. What do you mean? Happen. Stepping Stone. Stepping Stone, good. I swear to goodness. It's not good, he says. It's not For good, he says. So anyone Earth that says it's good. It's right. Oh, the fake Earth Spirit players. Oh, look at all these fakes. Abed, you're a fake. You heard that? You see Mike, have your gloves ready, Abed. I'll help you out. Let's, let's train up. Let's train up. Mike's a big guy. He can take a few punches. <laughs> you need your training, Abed, if you want to be serious about that. <laughs> you are a fighter, Profession Mike. I'll give you that. He he can't do it in one punch. I guarantee it. <laughs> you are you are too much of a uh, a seasoned brawler, as I'd like to say, Mike. Cowrie's <laughs> oh. rotated now. Top plane. See if they can set up onto Akashi. I mean, Cuckoo's gonna run into jabs. They've brought Joe Cam over as well, so it's a 3v3. Akashi Ooh. is dropping Ooh. low though, still trying to go for the man fight and Ooh. actually gets him. Akashi will secure before he does go down, so he at least gets a bit of golden XP out of this. And they'll even find Q on the snap fire. Kauri. Actually brought his courier through the twin gates. I was wondering who else was coming. But it'll just be Kauri leaving the area, going into mid lane to see if he can maybe find a, an arrow onto the puck, or maybe even just secure the power runes. He, he doesn't well, even have arrow, never mind, John. He's just securing power runes. Abed gets himself a big one. Amp damage with half duration dragon form left. I thought it was not going to be that comfy to hold this lane. Lots of emphasis on mid now, with this DK on the dragon form. Even Q showing up in this lane. And not much talent can really do about this. This DK is just a little bit too tanky at this point. Damage is a little bit lacking if Akashi doesn't show up. Joe Camp's going back up top. Cuckoo is there as well. They could think about trying for jabs. Wraparound is out. Akashi, meanwhile, will get X'd up into the TP of Arbed. They'll try to burst down Akashi, and it looks like they might just have him. Tyron will lock him down. Cogs is very awkward. Akashi, though, still making some space and actually gets out of it. That saved him. All right. Ooh. Well, I, mean, I, I wouldn't have expected it. Bottom tower that, that looked like such an awkward Cogs. Akashi manages to dance around it, and it cuts Abed off in the side. He's not able to walk up. Already popped Breed Fire early. So, he gets to survive very awkwardly. Doesn't feel great for Talon, but they will find that kill on Kauri bot for WS. So, you are finding everything around the map. One to four. I do appreciate what Aurora is doing with her warding. Look at these wards on mid. Watching behind the tier one, watching in front of the tier one. But all of that time spent on mid led to a dodge dragon tail stun from Mikado and then nothing else but a double damage from Abed. So, he feels pressure to wa walk around the map and they still don't find anything. It's, um... The idea, the idea is nice, but the execution isn't really finding anything, and Talon is relatively happy to just sit back, farm, take these freebie kills. There isn't any pressure coming out onto TA2000, though. Because Meepo, again, is farming up relatively well. Isn't quite up there in that work, but it is kind of dead even across the cores. And as a Meepo, even at a dead even state, you are a little bit more impactful with your early items anyhow. So you're probably not going to mind too much here for TA2000. Bit of a chase onto Arbed, but he'll just throw the, the stun out and, and leave the area. WS feeling confident to just take the farm away from Arbed here in this Radiant Jungle. 
Scan out onto the doom, but nobody's going to really move there to, to try and help out. A bit of chip damage onto the tier 1 tower here from Makoto. Wrapping back around to the top lane, but Jabs is playing a lot safer now. Knowing that they have been constantly trying to gank him. Even has the Observer Ward on the triangle. Trying to take the stacks now is Makoto. Looks like he'll get away with the large creeps, but Jabs is going to intervene. So just, just Talon trying to be as much of a nuisance as possible here against this Konka. I like that read. Again, that's something that Aurora always falls back to, these triangle stacks as their way of just securing a lead or evening out a game. Talon just contesting it does make a fairly big dent on the flash farm that Abed could be having on the flash farm that Jabs could be having. At the very least, the Ancients still stand. So they will have this big source still standing, but it is blocked with a sentry. So they can't get any further stacks to accelerate up. 1-4, to four, game state still holding steady, but they are TPing down bot here. They certainly are, Joe Camp. Gonna be hexed up here. Should be going down very easily, but does at least tank the kank for WS. Jabs will come in for a, a nice quickie and we'll just leave straight away. But TA2000 has once again found himself on the top of the net worth board on the Meepo, which is very, very scary to think about if you are Talon. He's not too far ahead of anyone on the side of Talon, but again, we've seen what this Meepo can do once the Aghanim Scepter is available. And uh, it, it doesn't seem like they're going to be hunting this Meepo at all up until that point. It's a little bit curious as well from TA2000. He changes his itemization. Started with the Blade of Alacrity, looked like he was going to go Diffusal, had that queued up. He was up the Ags instead. So it's an Ags Rush Meepo. I, hmm, I mean, Mega Meepo is nice, but every time I see Ags first Meepo, it just doesn't feel like it has damage even in the Mega Meepo form. So I'm curious if that's going to be an issue down the line. Maybe you just rely on Abed and jabs to provide that right click damage for you or you're confident enough with just solar flare down the line providing enough attack speed for the meepo to still rip people apart gonna be an interesting change of pace for te 2000 to prioritize that durability and see if it's gonna be enough so far two to four this is the quiet game we were expecting coming into the series it takes us two games but we reach the classic talon versus aurora gameplay that we have that's all right, John. We're at game three. Oh, yeah, Aurora, they are backs against the wall here in this third game, so it makes enough sense for them to to go back to playing a lot more carefully. It is all about the Meepo timing, as we are going to have a quick pause out from Makoto. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> what do you do? So Makoto will go for the quick disconnection. FPS apparently is the issue, but Bosco says ping. Two daisies. A couple of different uh, <laughs> different reasons being provided here by Talon. <laughs> uh, it's a bit cheeky, isn't it? And it is. It could be both, you know? Yeah, it's not yeah. like either of them's lying. It's ping and FPS. You never know. All we need is one of the other boys to say mic issues. For, for <laughs> Everything's going wrong. Someone's PC got sabotaged. <laughs> Getting DDoSed. As the old meme used to go. A meme from bygone days of Dota 2. A lost era. It's funny. I feel like we're almost encroaching back to that era of Dota, aren't we? Like There was a time where we were months or even just weeks apart when Troll was a top tier carry. And then Sniper became a top tier support. We could have had those two together, Mike. And it would be 6.83 almost all over again. <laughs> I wish we got those two in the same spikes, but not quite. Don't you miss those days, Troll, Troll Sniper? Wasn't that oh, yeah. amazing? That was great, wasn't it? Yeah. Love that. 17 minute games every single time. Don't remind me. Every, it, 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 I'm getting depressed just thinking about it. <laughs> Come on. Basically, every game turns into Aurora versus Town. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. I'll give you that. You're not wrong. Smoke out from Aurora. They have Abed's Blink. Again, they still have this vision behind the Tier 1, but Kato's already hiding in the tree line. 
I'm a little bit curious why no one's showing anywhere. OBS, perhaps? No. Makoto will get stunned up here on the puck. Arrow's gonna connect as well. Makoto is gone. That's a very nice pick off here for Aurora. Immediately into the tier 1 town. And that's the big one they need to open up a little bit more aggression on the map. Tier 1, not going to take too long, but the damage on Abed and would carry to help the cause. No defense coming out from town, more interested in working their side lanes. As they are just building up. You know, the, the lineup of town you called up in the draft, it is a little bit greedier. You will need some initial farm before anything gets going here whatsoever. WS is being stalked by Q. Gonna be able to retreat. Makoto will go into the Marana. They're gonna find Kauri here in the Marana, but he does leap away, still the assassinate will follow him, but a nice smoke. A quick smoke out from Kauri. I think he even brought that out from the backpack. Just in the nick of time. It's very nice here from the Marana. Still smoked up as well, so they could try to make a bit of a gank here with this uh the surprise smoke out on WS, but seems like the Doom has kind of factored this in. He will retreat back towards his team. Hook oh. is out. Cuckoo, he's going to find Arbet. The Doom is out immediately from WS. There's a lot of heroes here from Aurora to try and fight back, but I don't know if they can really do so quite yet. They'll try to move onto WS, but the Doom will walk his way out as TA2000 now dropping quite low on the Meepo. He'll go into the Mega Meepo form to save himself. Meanwhile, Jab's now being targeted, does go down on the Kunkka. So it is one down. Chase continues. They want TA2000. They want the Meepo dead. But I think they might have to settle for somebody else because TA is a bit too tanky. And that was, again, a very ballsy initiation from Cuckoo. They get the Doom off onto Abed, ensuring that this DK, even though he doesn't die, can't contribute in that team fight. They do manage to clean up, barely saving WS with some really sick silences coming in from Mikado's angle. And Talon do manage to clean up and get that less than 1k lead for themselves. Not a massive lead by any means. But you can see some of the damage issues coming out here for Aurora with the Ags rush on TA2000. Yes, he can present himself. The right click output isn't particularly amazing. And if you can't use your DK while he's doomed up, you really don't have uh, damage to dish out in comparison to what Talon has. So, a great set of angles from Talon. Will find themselves a tier 1 bot, but Aurora still have a lot of the map to play with. Again, with that mid tier 1 cleared up, they're very safe in their own triangle. No further excursions here from Talon to clear that area out and the stacks are still constantly being built up for TA2000 to slowly chip away at going back for that disperser now in his itemization. For Talon's part, I mean, they've got the blink up on WS. He's going into that pipe to protect up against Starstorm, up against the poofs, up against all the damage from Jabs as well. Mikado for his part already has that Witchblade up, could be going for that blink next. And Akashi's just going for a very standard Marana, uh, sorry, a very standard Luna build up into the Manta style as well. So, again, for Talon, it's a little bit of a slower game. It does feel like Aurora is the one that needs to be up tempo. Mind you, it's not that much pressure on Aurora to play fast. They do scale with a DK, so you don't need to rush things too hard. But you are at the point where your heroes are just naturally a little bit stronger in comparison to what Talon has right now. Gonna be targeted mid lane. Kisses are gonna fly out. Hookshot is out. He's gonna be fine. Very nice from Cuckoo. Yes. Could be in a bit of danger. Stun will be out from Arbit. They desperately want some kind of kill here on Aurora. This time it seems like they'll have the Doom kill. That's a nice one. Much bigger one to find for sure. WS just not tanky enough without that pipe. Heck, even without just the cloak. Not going to be able to soak through that damage. Is providing the space for the rest of the team. Kashi's still safe in the triangle. They're not able to run into the right side instead. Providing that avenue for Akashi to keep his farm game up. Mikado is going for the Yule's first here. So wanting some ways of isolating some heroes and getting some dispel on himself from the root. Rather than something like the Blink, which is sensible up against the Meepo. 4-6, to six, again a very quiet game in comparison to our first two games here, as Talon also looking for their own build-up. We're actually just getting Jokeham straight into uh, Mjolnir, 
uh, Maelstrom. And, well, he's almost at the farm for uh, Maelstrom. So maybe this is less of a support sniper and just straight up, I really wanted to play core this game for Joe Cam. And he'll find a farm. It it could work out. I feel like this is the way you're meant to play support sniper anyway. It does feel like a support that's meant to transition into a core. So otherwise you just end up doing nothing after the laning stage. The support items don't exactly feel great on Sniper either, because he does want to sit at a range. <laughs> the Jabs is being watched by Makoto, but I do not believe they have enough numbers to really try for this kill. The Jabs will be fine to, to retreat once again. Akashi is farming out of control at this point as well on that Luna, still ahead of TA2000 and getting closer and closer to having his BKB up. We saw that last engagement as well, like, early on this Mega Meepo isn't really as tanky as you would quite hope, as it seems like Aurora, they are going to go for a 4-man smoke now, hoping to go back into their own jungle and find WS perhaps. But a very good read from Talon, realising the smoke is incoming. They look to retreat, Makoto though, maybe not getting the memo, but still gets the jaunt away as now they pop the doom right onto Arbet. Arbet a sitting duck, they'll break the coil with the cookie, but he is as good as there's oh. another hook shot. Cuckoo, he's gonna find Q, and Q has no way out of this. He's down once again. Very nice reads. I'm not sure if that smoke was under vision. They were quite close to an observer ward when they did smoke. But Talon, they this were ready scan. for that one. They got the scan off right in the nick of time, catching the tail end of that smoke. Allows Mikado to have the reflexes, sees the blink, instantly blinks away, or moves away on Puck. And they get just great counterplay from WS. No confidence to go further. Respawns are fairly short though, so there is time to look for a follow-up fight if they stall this tier 1. We're gonna try for Cuckoo. Cogs will come out, but it's not gonna save his life. Cuckoo will have to die for this. Still, I mean, it is just the pause 5 clockwork going down, so not really a big deal at all for Talon. It's just a, a freebie for Aurora. And they do at least manage to hold on to that mid-tier 1 tower, which they do deem very important, uh, considering they are still looking to play a bit of a farm game until they're ready. Just stalls out the game a little bit more. And Talon, for their part, I mean, they're not fully prepped to go, especially while Doom is down. You have to wait for WS to have this available once again. As he is, you know, constantly playing around with the Devil's Bargain, selling stuff, going back for stuff, going back for his Blink now. Just to get that initiation angle out for the team. You have the full Maelstrom up for Joe Camp, so he's just farming up camps by himself. Really going for that full scale. Going for his Power Treads next, and basically becoming a mini core very early on in the game. Mikashi, BKB just a recipe away into Lincoln's to protect up against Dragon Tail Stun or even just the Orchid from Abed. Or the X, just a lot of things to worry about here. Do appreciate all of this coming out for the itemization on Talents and for Aurora's part. You've got a Hurricane Pike being worked on by Abed to get himself out of dodge. The pipe almost done here for Jabs, and that Disperser only the recipe left for TA2000 as he will once again solo tormentor no problem. Nice free shard early on for Aurora. You get the little spit on the cookie, the kiss. On the cookie, at the very least, the lava. And Talon will go for their own Torm as well. A jetpack for Cuckoo could be pretty impactful here. As again, we saw yesterday when he was playing around with that clockwork. Allowed him to find some pretty crazy angles. Unfortunately, it is our sniper that gets his free shard. So a concussive grenade at the very least will allow Jokam to reposition. Aurora grouping up down to that bottom lane once again. Looks like a smoke is coming, and they are indeed. Full dispersers on the way as well for TA2000, just the courier bringing out the recipe as we speak. It's a Roshan attempt they're looking for, perhaps. They'll scout the area. I think the scan barely caught them as well here from Talon's end of things, so they know they're around this area somewhere. The Talon smoked up themselves, looking for the fight before the Roshan. Not seeing the Disperse yet on TA2000 though, so it could be a bit of an awkward fight for them to try and initiate on. on. Cuckoo, still trying to get some vision. Smoke about to wear off here for, for the side of Aurora, and now it does. Same will be said for Talon in just a moment. 
It's like Akashi who gets some information with these mirror with these illusions. And the rocket flare will see some vision here over Q on the Roshan pit. Aurora, they're just hiding in the tree line for now, waiting for the right moment as it looks like they are going to jump in here with Makoto, but he got silent stuff. Doom is out right onto the Meepo, onto the Mega Meepo, in fact. In a bit of danger now is TA2000. Meanwhile, Akashi just getting right to work, doing so oh. much damage. We'll take both of them down. Jabs is gone, along as, as, as well as TA2000. And WS just finding the perfect target. It's a, it's kind of the thing for the Meepo. Like, if he's already in the Mega Meepo form and you doom him, he just can do nothing. Uh, just no damage, truly really speak of. Again, you are reliant on Solar Flare. I think the idea behind Solar Flare and Meepo, Mega Meepo is pretty nice. It's just not enough to have more items up here. And Mikado just cuts off the angle well, right? Like, he's going around, he breaks the smoke, his smoke under the watcher, still has the confidence to scout with the orb, forcing Abed first further into the tree line. And Mikado just jumps Abed, forces the Orchid onto himself, but has the Yules. So it really doesn't matter. They get stuck in a choke point, and then everything else collapses with the Eclipse and the Doom coming on top. Just nice angles being found by Talon. And that leads into this Roche. Age is up for Akashi. And 7 to 11, 3k lead for Talon holding steady. This investment on TA 2000 Smeepo just not showing up to be impactful just yet. And Abed as well. Like, without anything defensive on this DK, without anything like a BKB, it just feels like this Dream Coil is constantly going to be an issue from Mikato. Like, even if he just catches one, as we've seen a couple of times, just catching out this DK alone is already going to cause issues for the side of Aurora. Because right now, most of their damage is actually this DK. It's really just this Dragon Form, this cleave damage, the splash damage he has, his durability. All that gets taken away when he's isolated with this big stun from Mikato. Jabs, pops the blade now, just a little bit afraid of the initiation. This hook shot is out. They caught the Murata. Cuckoo from a mile away catching Kauri. And Cuckoo's got some kind of vendetta against Kauri, just consistently spamming the voice line every time. Now they found Jabs as well. Jabs, he's a bit of a tankier boy, but still he's in huge trouble as they'll just drop the Eclipse from Akashi. My oh my talent! I I'll tell you what, John, this side is every game we see them, they just get better. Not they are. And. It's it's interesting because, you know, it felt like the old Talon roster with Ponyo already showed signs of promise and it did feel like they were just lacking like a clear voice in the game. You know, maybe in the first qualifier run and other third party tournaments it looked a little bit shakier. But this time around it looks like the time the time is just steadily improving them. Uh, Cuckoo is starting to fit in better and better with the team. They're all learning to trust each other's calls and understand what each player uh, has preferences for what how they see the game try to align their vision whereas for Aurora like we talked about and I think this is where the difference comes in when you with the differences in how many players you've swapped Aurora swapped three players Talon swaps one Aurora with her swaps you know mid lane is an isolated lane so it's fine it's individual play your side lane in TA2000 and Kauri have played together for a while so your laning is great it feels like the idea holistic idea in the game might not be aligning as much as you'd want it to at the moment. That could be just the slight difference between Talon and Aurora's performance. Because I think these two teams are mechanically equal. If not, I would actually say maybe Aurora is a little bit ahead mechanically on paper. Here we go again, Jonathan. Three man smoke is out. They all oh, they found TA2000. The Meepo again in the Mega Meepo form of WS with no hesitation oh. and the hook shot. Cuckoo right on target, blocking him in. TA trying to run, but this Doom has made it absolutely impossible for him to survive. He will die another time. And it's interesting too, the comparison, because we saw FBZ playing Doom against this same TA2000 Meepo. And he was having a lot of trouble finding these Dooms on the Mega Meepo. Uh, this time the WS, he is not having that difficulty. He certainly isn't. I think it's also down to understanding Meepo matchups. Because Cuckoo himself, when he was on... Darling and TNC, of course, when he was with Palos. Palos was a, a pocket Meepo 1 player as well. So he understands its shortcomings as a captain. He knows what to do against it. Just look how much emphasis he has. And look how much confidence he has to just go in as a pause 5 with nothing but really a solar crest to back him up and just commit onto the Meepo with the Doom. He knows there's nothing it can do. So it gives him confidence. He has the understanding of this hero as well. 
7 to 14. 8k lead for Talon. As Aurora, again, their draft correction, it makes sense. It's just not connecting. Talon's the one initiating every single time. And Aurora has attempted a couple of times, but just an unfortunate scan timing from Talon leads him to dodge. Very slippery heroes on hand. You've got the Lincolns fully up for Akashi. So Dragon Tail stun onto this. Uh, Luna is not going to be as easy to land. Uh, along with Manta, of course, to dodge out. You at least get the blink up on TA2000. So there's some aggressive angles our Meepo can take. But the burst play for the Meepo in blink poof is just not there. With the pipe up on WS, as long as he turns on that barrier, you're you're going to have to commit a little bit more than just blink poof here from the Meepo to actually nail someone down. Well, I wonder how Aurora try and want to try and intend on trying to fix this issue now. Like it just hasn't felt like any of these fights have been working out whatsoever. The seven to fourteen nine k advantage for Talon, and it's not slowing down anytime soon either. They've got to find some answers here, especially for this Meepo. He is the highest net worth hero on the map, on their side, that is. And, well, he's continuing to go for that tanky style of build-up here on the Meepo, but you, you just question what it's going to get done if the Doom just connects every single time. It's like, do you just not press Mega Meepo against WS? Is that just the idea? Like, it's 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 just such a hard game here for, for TA2000 now. And even without the Doom, like, Akashi's become a huge problem, and it's only getting worse. Oh. Hook? Oh, barely off the mark. A very nice four star from whoever did it. But still, I mean, you can just see Talon, they're looking for blood in the water. Or rather, they smell blood in the water. They're looking for a pickoff attempt always, as we are going to see a three-man smoke now from Aurora. Trying to move across the map and see if they can find anything for their troubles. They will run into Cuckoo. A Dream Coil, Makoto, he's found a lot of targets with that, but there's no backup incoming. Talon have decided they want to retreat. And so if you get away with only losing Cuckoo, it's perfectly fine. Though Aurora, they do at least get a bit of space now to, to farm them up. Not they do. I think Talon just waited out Solar Flare to fade away. So they could take the re-engage without that buff on the Meepo and the DK. Half duration left on Abed, or have split apart, and Talon are still holding this triangle here. Oh my god, Akashi. One, uh, one loose and beam with the Kanda, and Kari lost over half his HP. In fact, it's, it wasn't it's even, not the even the Kanda yet. It's a phylactery. Great. Uh, how great is that, that great? I mean, uh, going back to what you were theorizing here for TA2000's playstyle, right? I can understand why he's instantly Mega Meepoing. Ideally, you would do what you're saying. Stay in your regular Meepos as long as possible. Try to force a Doom out and then Mega Meepo up. But you can't do that when you're up against Luna. And you have the Glaives fired in Lucent Beam. You have the Glaives bouncing around. Just so much damage that is spread across every single Meepo that you could just die. TA? It's very challenging. Bottom lane, TA 2000. He's in trouble. And look at the Doom out again from WS. The perfect timing. The problem is there's no real backup. Oh, Makoto, he's coming. They've got the puck here. They're going to lose WS, but can, Mo can Makoto really keep going here after this Meepo? I think the answer's maybe no. Makoto may have gone a bit too far, but here comes Cuckoo to try and help out. They'll take down Q. Kauri almost dropping to boot. Akashi trying to oh. chase. So is Makoto, but a very nice torrent holding them back. Barely allowing the escape route for TA2000. It's such a close call. And that's a big pickoff. They'll, they'll trade their support for WS. They will. A big win for the side of Aurora in trying to stall this game out. Again, just the timing of WS gets the Doom off as the Mega Meepo is flying on. So it ends up on the Mega Meepo. And then just forces that entire duration for TA2000 as a retreat. Sacrifices the life in the process. Akashi not quite close enough to really uh, join in with his team. If they had Luna, it would be a different story entirely. But I do like where Akashi is going with his itemization. Going for the Satanic to replace the Mask of Madness after finishing up the Conda into a Swift Blink. And just getting that possibility of repositioning here to get more aggressive on the Luna. Especially as, say, Solar Flare starts to fade away. It does make this set of engagements easier for Talon. You also have insane scaling. Joe Cam has to pull me all here. <laughs> this is just kind of silly at this point. I was going to say that last fight, I, I was surprised at the damage Jokam was doing to the TA2000 and the Mega Meepo. I was like, oh, look at that, Jokam's actually hitting him kind of nicely. 
And it's like, okay, now it makes a bit more sense. <laughs> it's just it's actually, it's just playing carry. It's actually legit it's pick up though as well, right? Like the Mjolnir active, you you put it on one of your one of your heroes that the Meepo is jumping on, and they just they just get zapped. You know what you're doing, Mike? You're justifying the support sniper pick. <laughs> now people in pubs will pick support sniper, rush Mjolnir, and they're like, I heard a caster say, "Guy, no, they'll just say, guys, I can put Mjolnir active on you. It's fine. I'm support." You will see this, Mike, because you have justified it. Well, the joke's on you, John. It already happens to me. It already happens. <laughs> Scotty up now on TA2000. He, ooh, he could get caught though. Coil is out. They'll find a Marana. Kauri gonna get deleted here by Joe Camp. <laughs> Hook off the mark. Cuckoo very close to hooking Arbed in the tree line, but not quite close enough. Yeah. Not the biggest kill. You do take away Solar Flare, I suppose, for half a minute, but respawn's not that long here for Aurora. They're holding onto the high ground nice and well. They've got Jabs up with his Ags. So the two boats flying out can be a little bit of a nuisance here for Talon to contend with as well. But with Aegis up, Kashi's just going to get started in the high ground and have the banner to secure these creeps on top of this. And they'll just get started. No problems coming out. Fortify forced out. Next creep wave coming in, though. You really don't care too much right now on Talon. Jumpin is there. They got the stun off onto Akashi. They want to try and burst through his Aww. first life, but it's a lot of damage back the way of Arbid. In fact, now the Eclipse coming in, but they do escape. Scary times for poor old Arbid, just trying to initiate a fight. They will lose their mid racks. It's still three minutes on the Aegis as well, so there is time if Talon want to try and come back after a reset and go again. No pressure here whatsoever. Might be a little bit more awkward now to try to take that fight with Kauri back up, with the Solar Flare, of course. So there is damage potential here for Abed. Dragon Form is going to fade away soon, and it's going to be on cooldown for a minute yet. So timing is a little bit awkward here for Aurora. They want to sneak outside. Talon just going to be hugging that triangle. They're getting a great job done here on maybe just trying to cut this creep wave with TA2000. Just to try to stall, but doesn't commit for it. So mid creep wave just going to be shoving in. High ground, still available for Talon. Akashi does not care. No, he does not. He still has those two lives available. Akashi is slowly losing his first life, but TA2000 is gone! Oh, oh TA2000 is gone without buyback. Akashi just manned up through uh -oh. all the damage Cuckoo up, but as now they've got Jabs as well. Cuckoo with the hook. Jabs will survive. Aegis is gone now for Akashi, but without TA2000, it feels like you are lacking a lot of fight. As Makoto now... Sensing that they could just pull it a little in this game has moved in. He'll find Q as well. It's a 3v5 scenario. And Talon. Talon a one. Well, I mean, one ancient away from proceeding through this grand final to Dream League Season 24. And I think they might just have it here, John. There's too much time. Too much time for Aurora to have to wait for TA. And they call it. GG is called. Talon. Jeez. Re owing Aurora in a best of five grand final. How about that? Not what I expected at all coming into this.